lightning like Steve McQueen. I'm in the fast lane when the light turns green. And I built tough, I ain't nothing but grit. Cause I made rugged blood, sweat, and spit. Yeah, like a horse I fly. Then I push yourself in for a bumpy ride. I like to play hard, but I work harder. And I weather the storm cause I'm built stronger. Hey guys, before we jump into the episode, I wanted to let you know it is brought to you by Denim. As a business owner myself, I personally know the importance of financial stability and preserving cash flow to help navigate through any freight market. With Denim's comprehensive service offering, you now have an all-in-one financial partner whose platform includes factoring, payments, freight audit, document collection management, and analytics, which help keep your business financially healthy and increase your team's time to focus on revenue-producing activities. You can also take advantage of Denim's free credit check, which they perform on all of your customers. And Denim will proactively reach out to you if they spot any signs of credit deterioration. Finally, Denim always pays your carriers first. As a broker, this is imperative to preserving your credit score in the market, which ultimately helps you become a broker of choice to your carrier partners. Are you ready to learn more? Visit Denim.com to schedule a demo today. Just do me a favor and let them know that the freight coach sent you. This episode is brought to you by SPI Logistics, the premier freight agent logistics firm in North America. For over 40 years, SPI has been diligently building the most successful freight agent network to provide first-class relationships for our shippers, receivers, and carrier partners. We are more than another transportation network. We are a dedicated team of professionals united by one singular purpose, and that is to expedite our agent's success. All of our agents are set up for success on day one, as they are provided with a full suite of support staff that is ready to assist them with everything from after-hours emergencies to financial and administrative needs on a no-fee basis. This way, you can focus on continuing to grow your business. There is no financial risk to start, and you have the ability to earn up to 75% in commissions. If you are looking to take control of your financial future and build your business with the backing of one of the most successful logistics firms in North America, visit www.spi3pl.com to learn more. Do me a favor and let them know that the Freight Coach sent you. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? We are back. We are live. It is the Freight Coach Podcast, the top podcast in transportation coming to you guys every single weekday, 8.30 a.m. Pacific, 10.30 Central. To break down some industry headlines, but most importantly, you guys, provide some actual insight into what you can do with all of this information. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome. This is the real side of freight, ladies and gentlemen. And what do I mean by that, though? I mean, I only speak with transportation professionals, you guys, because at the end of the day, I want to talk to the right individuals who have done what you're looking to do or who are currently doing what you're trying to achieve. So you can take all of this information, apply it, Utilize it and see a meaningful difference in your business and your life. And today's guest is none other than somebody out there who has an insane amount of experience out there in a certain sector of the industry. And, you know, as I mentioned a couple weeks back, you guys, we're we're kind of shifting the focus of this show. Or not kind of, we are to be more topic oriented as a whole, as opposed to just breaking down a few headlines here and there and talking shit. Although the shit talking will continue. Don't worry about that. But we're going to be more kind of hyper-focused out there, you guys, because there are very real decisions that people make inside of their companies every single day. And buying and selling equipment is uh, on top of mind for every single one of my uh, driver friends that are out there, carriers, as well as brokers, too. I know a large group of brokers that are buying trailers now and, and doing a bunch of stuff. So with that being said, I got my man James Courier back on the show. James, what's going on, brother? How are you? Jolly pleasure to be here as always. I appreciate you having me on. No, man, I I love having you on. A, you're a strapping Canadian. You're a good friend of mine. And, you know, I I like it because of, you know, the company that you work for, you you guys are private, right? So like you guys are out there kind of, you guys look at things a little bit differently. And, you know, you've been on the show a few times now and you, you know, you've given a lot of great insight on the decisions on why you guys make it your way as opposed to some other lenders. And, you know, there, there's just so much stuff that's kind of going on out there, but like what, what's new in your world, man? How's everything been going? Uh, my world is humming along nicely. Um, being in the, in the lending space, um, you know, things are always very cyclical, particularly in transportation. All Mm -hmm. I do is trucking and, um, you know, when you do it long enough, you understand that things are going to go up and down 
uh, in left and right sometimes. And, and that's the state that we're in right now. Um, I don't think that's a secret to anyone. So, yeah. you know, we, we just keep humming along and serving our clients as best we can. And, you know, sometimes that's writing 100% new business. Sometimes that's doing a lot of refis. It's all over the map. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, I, I think financing from a business perspective is, you know, it, it's a whole new ball game. And I know like we, we've covered this in the past, but I kind of want to bring back to that because I think that, you know, I, I've been talking a lot about how, you know, at the midway point in the year, and I know we're a little over that, you need to be constantly looking at your P&L, right? Like you need to be constantly looking at where is your money going? What, what, what monies are coming in? And you got to be balancing out because running a business is vastly different than most people understand. And it's not just take a course online and all of a sudden you're a millionaire in trucking. And there's very real decisions that you have to make out there. And especially when you're buying equipment for the very first time. And, you know, I got kind of, I don't want to say schooled on this, but I was enlightened about this when I went and bought a truck uh, a new, a pickup truck for, for my business. Right. Cause my CPA was like, Hey man, we should take advantage of this tax credit. That's going away Buy a new vehicle. This was in 2023, but they're like buy a new vehicle. And we do that. So I went in there, uh, you know, I had, but we bought from this dealership here in, in the Phoenix Metro, uh, Henry Brown out in Gilbert, Arizona, if anybody's wondering. And, uh, I went in there and I was like, oh, it's going to be for my business. So like, all right, cool. So we got everything done. And they're like, Hey man, you got to have a personal guarantee on this loan. I'm like, can I ask why? And I'm like, I've been in business now for like four years. Like I have contracts, I have revenue, I have all of this stuff. They're like, yeah, but uh, it, it's a different style of loan. And especially if it's your first loan, we have like, you're a brand new person, essentially. It doesn't matter you have good credit. It doesn't matter any of that stuff. You're, you're a high risk still because of that. So they're like, you have to be a personal guarantee on this loan. So I'm like, all right, well, here we go. So. And nothing about that is unusual. Yeah. No, so I mean, we ask for personal guarantees from some folks and, and don't from others. Um, it, it all depends on uh, the credit quality, how long you've been around um, and a variety of other factors. Um, you know, some companies have no problem doing it. Um, what I find is that uh, the, the smaller owner operators and small fleets tend to be a little, taken aback or shocked with us uh, or anyone else asking for a personal guarantee. It's not the large fleets or the medium sized fleets, the 500 plus fleets that even bat an eye at, at personal guarantees often. It's the people who are not used to writing this type of business. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, again, I, I think that, you know, you live and you learn on a lot of this stuff, but it, it's going to be a very, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Steve Seca says, great shave, great beard, and all. Let's talk. <laughs> Thanks, oh, that, threw, that threw me off. Um, but no, man, I think that as you're going in there, this is what people need to be prepared for, right? Because I, I don't know who's out there telling people when you're new in business that you don't need to have a personal guarantee. And I think like, you know, cause like I've seen it out there, on, you know, some YouTube videos about like, Oh, just open a LLC and then open a small business credit card. Um, and then do that. And I'm like, yeah, but you still have to have a personal guarantee. Like I, you know, full transparency, my, my personal credit score is in the eight hundreds. Okay. And even Perfect. I, even I had to do a personal guarantee for my first business credit card, mm -hmm. my second business credit card, same, same situation. Um, my first business loan that I took out for my truck, personal guarantee on top of that, because like, again, like you, I don't understand. I don't think a lot of people understand the amount of risk that is out there when, when you're going into business, just because like you, like, I'm not advocating for failure for anybody, but like the, the, the numbers are the numbers when it comes down to, you know, startups failing within the first couple of years like it's an alarmingly high rate it is absolutely and um you know to your point there is a misconception in the marketplace particularly and maybe not particularly um but it, from my experience in the trucking world there's this misconception that people should have um loans given to them next day regardless of what they fill out and so um, if, if we get a credit application and, you know, a single tax return, um, you know, it takes some time to actually do the due diligence on that and decide whether or not this person gets a loan or this business gets a loan. And 
what kind of terms and conditions go along with that loan. Ultimately, when we're holding 100% of the risk, um, you know, often we have to ask for 10% down or uh, escalated payments for the first year, um, whatever that might look like. Um, these are not unusual things, and it's not unusual for institutions of any kind to take two or three days to make those decisions, particularly when you get above five hundred thousand dollars. The institution should do its due diligence, and um, what you're going to see is more questions asked from all institutions across the board, given the number of delinquencies and over ninety day payment uh, receivables right now institutions are going to start asking more questions. This is a, a typical practice that all institutions should follow. The and idea that anyone should be lending out uh, a half a million dollars or a million dollars on app-only credits is, in my opinion, ridiculous. How much does the current freight market have to play into the decisions you guys make? So, you know, again, say I've, I've been a driver for... 15 years now, I'm like, you know what, man, I'm sick and tired of working for somebody. I want to go out. I want to get my own, my own truck, my own trailer. I want to start doing this for Chris Jolly trucking. Um, I don't have any immediate customer. decline if it's called Chris Jolly trucking. <laughs> I don't blame you for that. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what, you know, I go out there, you know, say I, I got everything in line, man. I got my business structured properly, but I'm coming to you. I'm like, James, hey, I, I want to buy this truck and I want to buy this trailer. Um, how do I best prepare for that first uh, interaction with you? Do I have all my personal finances up to date for you? Should I be expecting a, you know, like, and, and again, take this however, you know, kind of you want with it in the direction is my personal credit, the amount of money I can put down. What are some of those big factors that I should be aware of before I even walk in? Um, so from a corporate perspective, uh, financials are always helpful. If you don't have financials, tax returns from the company and personally uh, are both requested uh, every time, particularly for small businesses and owner operators. Um, credit application, tax returns, um, and, and the type of business that you're going after. So to your question initially, does the freight market have uh, any impact on what we're doing? Absolutely, it does. Um, and it does with every lender, uh, regardless of whether you're an independent or major bank, the freight market, and you know, it, it it's an indicator of what we're seeing right now with a lot of the larger lenders exiting the market and squashing a lot of lines of credit for these trucking companies. It's been happening for um, 14 to 16 months now. Um, the reason why they're doing that is because of the freight market. So when we're lending against trucks and trailers, we are absolutely uh, factoring in what is going on the market, going on in the market right now, and where you're driving your business. So if you look at the average spot rate for a drive-in in the U.S., hovering right over two dollars a mile, we know that your cost is roughly two dollars a mile at best. It, as an owner-operator, probably well above that. Mm -hmm. So our biggest question is where are you getting your business? And if it's on the spot market, uh, you know, how are you making those payments? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you actually have to do some convincing. So uh, w what does the rest of this year look like, man? Because I like, I, again, I, I don't, nobody knows when anything's going to change or get better or anything like that. Everybody, it's all educated guests. It's all, you know, it's a lot, a lot of shot, shot in the dark style talk yeah. that's out there. Cause like, you know, I see a lot of headlines out there like, Oh, are we in the recovery? I, I don't feel it. You know, again, the, uh, take it for what it's worth. I, I'm a, in a startup phase, but we're, we're actively calling shippers every single day. We're bidding on freight every single day. I haven't personally noticed a bump in anything on the areas that I'm working in. Um, I've said it, you know, in the past and I'll say it again, I think the over like the recovery and I'll use air quotes on that are, it's going to be a slow and gradual increase, man. And I, and I think that, you know, November here in the States has a lot hanging on it from where things are going to possibly go. So how are you guys looking at things right now? So again, say besides Chris Jolly getting, you know, instantly declined for Chris Jolly trucking being the name. 
But, you know, for those serious buyers that are out there, how are you guys assessing what things look like for the next, you know, four months of, of 2024 here? Well, being a smaller institution allows us to be a lot more flexible and agile than mm -hmm. most, I would think. Um, you know, we don't have 5 million shareholders that we need to report to every quarter. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it, it does allow us, and, and we do have a smaller team than any major bank, um, a lot more flexibility and, and agileness in order to switch gears potentially when when things do turn down or turn up. Um, my crystal ball is just as broken as yours. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that that necessitates us being fast on the market and it's freight. Everyone has to be fast all of the time. Um, you know, we what we saw in 22 and 23 with the rise and then fall of equipment prices, you have to be on it. Yeah. Um, and that's no different with uh, interest rates uh, loaned against trailers. Um, you know, the reality right now is that, I, you know, I would think rates have to come down in the U.S. They, they've started to come down in Canada. We've had uh, two de decreases in Canada. Um, I think the U.S. is going to follow suit and start to decrease. Given all of the inflation numbers and the cost of goods, um the the reality is is that you know people are getting squeezed and when people are getting squeezed in the general retail space the freight doesn't move yeah we it, need we need freight to start moving and in order for freight to start moving interest rates need to come down new home builds need to go up uh drastically and uh you know things need to start to balance out if this is what uh recovery looks like then we're in deep trouble for the next six months. That being said, I, I don't think we're in the midst of a recovery at the moment. Everything has flatlined yeah. and somebody needs to get the paddles out and actually start jumpstarting some, some economic indicators. Yeah. I mean, cause it's like, I, I look at it and again, I, I'm not an economist or anything like that. I mean, obviously, and I did go to public school. So I always, I want I'd like to throw those caveats out there. Um, I don't know if a rate reduction for the interest rates out there is going to open the floodgates uh, of anything because it's not like they're going to go from where it's at and then cut that shit in half, right? Like it's not going to be anything to where people are going to all of a sudden open up their wallets because, you know, another factor out there is, is you know, credit card like balances are at an all time high here in the United States. Delinquencies are at an all time high. Auto loans are starting to rise on delinquencies as well. So it's like, even, yes, I'm not saying that I don't want them to, you know, do their job and, and improve shit, you know, but like I, the, the reality is, is I don't think it's, and it's, again, it's another thing that I don't think it's going to be a cataclysmic rise where it's like, oh, boom, we're back in this perfect utopia. People are spending all this money again. We're in a shit pile of ish of problems here. Like, you yeah, know, if you, absolutely. And economic scale. Ideally, this is exactly what a soft landing looks like is it flatlines for several months and then you start to build it back. And in my honest and very humble public school education based opinion, um, I think that that's probably what the Democrats were aiming for all along. If, if this is the absolute bottom of what a soft landing looks like, then, you know, thankfully, most people are coming away fairly unscathed. This is not a, a Great Depression or even a drastic recession. This is a, if it is the bottom, it's it's a fairly soft landing, all things considered. And then you start building it back up. It's when you see a cataclysmic rise again is when things start to go sideways very quickly. The economy should be boring. This yeah. is what it's supposed <clears throat> to look like. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm right there. I'm right there with you in the sense of like, you know, again, I always look at it like, man, no, you you can't control what's going on in Montreal. I can't control what's going on in D.C., uh, you know, or Quebec, excuse me. Like, uh, we, uh, we can't, Ottawa. Ottawa. Close, yeah, whatever. You, know, you guys are all the same up there, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Great. That's a good sound bite. But uh, no, it's, it's one of those things, man, where we can't control any of that stuff. But 
we can, there's a lot that we can control, right? And I think that that's where a lot of people need to go in and assess where, where the market is right now and where it's going to be trending here. I mean, Steve brings up a good point um, about this, that uh, Canadian Pacific is, you know, that the strike, you know, for in Canada as of August 22nd at midnight, which will affect uh, the over the road network if action occurs. And that's unprecedented out there. Um, and, you know, so again, there's there's a lot of stuff that could be happening, right? Like there's a there's threats for port strikes here uh, and mm-hmm. on the East Coast as well. Like there's a bunch of stuff that could be happening. But again, like I think like ultimately the overwhelming majority of us who are in that small business, and I don't know what the Canada trucking breakdown looks like, but here in the States, like 90 some percent of the trucking market is controlled by small business. Right. Mm -hmm. So again, it's like, we we don't have the purchasing power or the buying power. And again, I think like we really got to focus on how do we make our business financially stronger during these times. Right. And Mm -hmm. is that a debt consolidation? Right. Do I have multiple lenders out there? You know, did I buy my trailer from these guys? Did I buy my trucks from these guys? Do I have multiple, whatever, uh, do I look into consolidating that down? Do I look at, you know, maybe I downgrade my office space, for example, maybe I shot for the moon and thought that I was going to need all this space and I don't. And, you know, again, I think like those are those things that you need to be looking at right now. You need to be looking at how do I strengthen my balance sheet more than anything, I personally think, because like all of this is pie in the sky stuff, man. We don't know what's going to happen. I don't think anybody, there's a bunch of educated guess, guesses out there, but like, is that going to pay my bills. No, it's not. What no. can I do to make it happen though? You know, the, the if you talk to 10 economists, the reality is, is that you're probably going to get 10 di- different answers on what the economy looks like today and what it's going to look like a month from now. Um, you know, I, I don't know too many economists who are ever unemployed and looking for jobs. And so take their opinion with a grain of salt. They're very smart people, um, but somewhat removed from the actual... Um, dirty fingers part of what we do um so you know again my crystal ball is uh just as smeared and smudged as yours Mm -hmm. um i i would like to hope that we're at the bottom and, and coming out of this um but like you said there's a lot of opportunity for pulling out equity on equipment and injecting cash into a business it's a lot of what we're doing right now um and ultimately, if if the cash is there for you to take it out of your equipment and hold on your balance sheet, that allows you to remain in a good position, particularly with your primary lenders and maintain your cash position with them, uh, whatever that might look like as, as a business decision for you in particular, we can help you get there. And, and so can all of the other institutions. We're not unique in that. Yeah. Um, I'd like to think that we're a little more proactive in it though. Let me ask you this, James. And again, if this is, you know, I, cause I, I just thought about this. So say my truck has, you know, $30,000 in equity in mm-hmm. it for hypothetical example. And I have a high interest loan on my trailer that just happens to be for $30,000. Mm-hmm. Is there a way that I could pull the equity out of my truck to pay that trailer off? and then refinance it all through you? Like what would, how would that look? Borrow from Peter to pay Paul? Yeah, essentially. Yeah, in order to reduce your interest rate, there's, I mean, there's always a way around it, sure. Okay, so that that is a possibility. Like if you have equity in there, because like yeah. I know, you know, I, 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 you know I, I have a lot of friends who own companies and they were talking about that, uh, how like they had equity in one piece of equipment inside of their office. This wasn't a trucking thing. And then they had a, a, you know, a piece that wasn't being used, but like they still had a loan on it. So Mm -hmm. they were able to, you know, essentially pull equity out of one thing to pay that off and then spread that debt out over a couple of years uh, and and stuff like that. So I think like, you know, again, from I'm I'm just trying to think of like, how can people get creative here to to stay in business? And would you even think of that if you weren't in that situation? Well, a lot of people are thinking about it right now. and, And the ones with clever accountants are reaching out to us. Uh, A lot of what I've done over the last six to nine weeks is exactly that, helping people find equity in their equipment, um, uh, refinancing and underwriting uh, to find the equity, put a cash injection in um, into the company or uh, refinance another piece of equipment 
in order to buy new equipment. Um, it, it is all over the map. I mean, it, it, it takes sitting down and looking at what you've got in your fleet and understanding where you want your business to be a year from now. If, if you want your business to be exactly where it is today, keep doing what you're doing, make smart decisions. If you want to continue growing, then it may take some more creative juice behind uh, the effort. Do you think, you know, and this might be a personal, you know, opinion style question for you here, man. Do you think it's better for smaller businesses to work with multiple financial institutions early on? Or is it plant my flag with somebody early and build up with them so I could work with James over time and then I could maybe expedite my my purchasing power, right? Because again, we we're talking about personal guarantees to start the mm -hmm. you know the show. Or do you look at just the business's financial history before you would make a decision on something like that? I so there might be uh, questions there too. So. There are multiple, um, and there are mo multiple factors that you need to consider when making those lending uh, mm -hmm. decisions. Um, what I find most prevalent is that when you are a small business and trying to grow your fleet in the trucking space, most often you have several lenders uh and then often what will happen is uh as you continue to grow you need to find a lender that will continue to grow with you ultimately most lenders tap out at certain spots and if if you have a growing trucking company you found uh, a few profitable contracts early on um then you need an institution that will help you grow with that business growth uh, and that often means, you know, finding new partners. So it, again, it, it all boils down to what you want to do with your business. If all you want ever is uh, a five truck, 10 trailer company uh, with a few owner operators uh, and you driving in the seat from time to time, then one lender may be able to get you there for the rest of your life. Whereas if you've got five trucks and 10 trailers now, and want to have 500 and a thousand four years from now you're going to likely need multiple lenders and institutions that will uh continue to grow with you yeah yeah i i think that 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 is probably the first question that a lot of people need to ask is you know when you're going out and starting you know what direction do you want to go with it you know or because i think like you know, everybody goes into business thinking that they're going to be the best and the biggest and they're going to grow the fastest and everything else. Right? At least I, that's what I thought. Right. But I also look at it, you know, the further and further along I get, I'm like, hey, however big we get is kind of I don't want to say it's out of my control. But like my goal is to always just be known as the best provider out there, the best transportation company. That's like, you know, however that looks. But I think that some people need to understand that it, it's completely okay, right? Like for all of those people that are out there, they're like, hey, I just want to be an owner op. I, I just kind of want to do my thing, man. Or if Nothing you're wrong with that. Yeah. Or if you're starting a brokerage and you're like, hey, I just want to build a business where I can personally make $150,000 a year. Uh, I, I think that there's a lot of power in that. I think a lot of people, and, I, and I'm lumping myself in there. I, I wasted a lot of time thinking that I wanted something that I don't know if I actually truly do um, because I thought it was the right thing to say. And I think going in there and knowing like, hey, James, I, I want to buy this. You know, yeah, it's just me right now. But I want to get up to five trucks and 10 trailers one day. I don't know if I want to get any bigger than that. Maybe by the time I get there, we can reassess it. But I think like right now, this is as big as I want to go. I think there's a lot of power in that. I think you're going to save 100 percent a lot of stress long term if you just go in there and you're just like hey you know what this is really as i i just want to build it up to where i can live a comfortable life and 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 you know and, and enjoy some stuff you know one one of the things that uh happens early uh and often when i'm meeting with new folks is sitting down and taking a look at their strategy um and what they want to do over time with their trucking companies um, particularly when they're small and, you know, say under five, 10 years old. If you sit there and tell me that you want to be the biggest and the best, my first question for you is the biggest and the best at what? There's a lot of space out there uh, in the trucking world that is outside of uh, regular dry van loads. So 
you know, the biggest and the best at what is a really solid question and a good starting point. Have a strategy, sit down, be intentional with what you want to do and where you want to go. Nothing wrong with being an owner operator, nothing wrong with wanting 500 trucks and a thousand trailers. I can help you get to either one of those, but we have to be intentional about it. Yeah, no, I think that 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 saves, uh, a, a lot of headaches and especially early on right i think like you know if i could go back uh you know a, at all i i would mainly want to focus on all right how do i raise my biz my business acumen right away and how do i focus on just building a quality company as opposed to i'm just going to be better than everybody else fuck everyone else I, I, like i think that there's a lot of strategy that you can go and, and apply early on, really know what you want to go after. You know, because again, like in, inside of my brokerage, for example, and I know we're almost out of time, so we'll kind of wrap up. Like we, we primarily just do full truckload, right? Like 99% of the freight that we do is full truckload. Can I do other stuff? I mean, yeah, but like that's not really my bread and butter right now. In one day in due time, I, I thought that, you know, when I first started, we were going to do everything and be the best at everything, yada, 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 choose a niche, this and that, and then grow. But I'm also like, now I'm like, you know, I don't know, man. I I, I kind of just want to build my get my business to a path of profitability, and then we'll just assess it at at certain stages. So, profitability is important, and um, everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the mouth, right? So no, that, that's every, exactly. A lot of people are getting punched in the mouth right now, and have to come up with different strategies and plans going forward. Um, so, talk to your lenders, talk to your network, talk to your friends, sit down with folks like me and come up with a strategy and and move from there i love it james as always man thank you so much for jumping on and i uh, appreciate and you having me jolly and thank you as the year progresses you know we'll have you come back on and continue to talk about this because this stuff could literally change at the you know at, at any second here but uh how does anybody Talking reach out to you james to find out more reach out uh on linkedin or james.courier at finlock.com anytime always Perfect. happy to chat Perfect. And if for some reason you guys can't find James, just hit me up. I'll gladly put you guys in direct contact with him. But uh, that's going to be it for today. You guys, we got guests coming on throughout the week and we're going to continue to talk about how are we going to navigate through this by people who are actually making those decisions and doing that work every single day. As always, if you guys got value in what you heard, subscribe to the show, you guys share it out there to your network, because if you see value, your network's going to see value as well. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. And we'll be talking to you soon.